An American doctor becomes a member of the Red Army. While in the Revolutionary Base area, he treats tens of thousands of soldiers and civilians. With the founding of the People's Republic, his medical work takes a new direction, battling venereal disease and leprosy. We'll bring you the story of this legendary doctor. Eighty years ago, an American doctor joined the Red Army. He would later be the first Westerner to become a member of the Communist Party of China. After the founding of the People's Republic, he turned his attention to battling venereal disease and leprosy in China. His name was George Hatton. In China, he's better known as Ma Haidu. George Hatton was born in Buffalo. New York, in 1910. His father, a Lebanese immigrant, was a steel worker. Although the family was poor, George had a good education and was an excellent student. At the age of 23, having obtained his PhD in medicine from the University of Geneva, he and two classmates set sail for China, where they planned to research tropical medicine. After reaching Shanghai in the autumn of 1933, the three young men set up a private clinic on Qiuqiang Road. Before long, Hatton met the American journalist Agnes Smedley in a bookshop on Avenue Joff. She introduced him to Sung Ching Ling, the widow of Sun Yat-sen. Sung. Who had close connections with the Chinese Communist Party encouraged him to join a Marxist study group made up of foreigners. There, he met several progressive people, including Rui Ali. Because Rui Ali is a Communist Party member, and also, for the revolution, is very. 呃，很呃赞扬，所以艾丽呢就等于培养我父亲，让他参加看一些超丝厂。他看到很多童工，呃，很小的年纪，去找那个丝的剪的头，从里面抽出头来呢，他们的手啊，长时间在碱水里头。都都烂了，都都很多都露出骨头。Hatton, himself from a poor family, empathized with the suffering of ordinary Chinese people. He concluded that the only way to save the country's working people from their plight was to transform Chinese society. And this, he decided, could only be achieved through a revolution. At the time, China was in a state of civil war. The main body of the Communist Red Army, trapped by Kuomintang forces in Zhejiang, Jiangxi Province, had resolved to take drastic action. They staged a breakout, beginning an epic journey that would later be known as the Long March. Eventually, the Red Army reached the desolate Shanbei Plateau in northwest China. But the Long March had taken a dreadful toll on the soldiers, and the Communist Party leadership was extremely concerned about their health, especially as there wasn't a single professional doctor in the entire Red Army. So, in March 1936, Mao Zedong contacted Sun Qingling by telegraph. Asking her to find a foreign doctor who would agree to come to the revolutionary base area. Sun Qingling put Mao's request to George Hatton. Hatton agreed. This is his passport. On the visa page, it's clearly stated that he was permitted to go to Xi'an, but he could not enter the military conflict zone. 
which was precisely where he wanted to go. Hattam intended to travel first to Xi'an and from there make his way to northern Shanxi. When his train stopped in Zhengzhou, he was joined by another American, the journalist Edgar Snow. Snow had been invited to northern Shanxi to report on the communist efforts to resist the Japanese invasion. At a hotel in Xi'an, Hattam and Snow were contacted by an underground party worker. On July the 13th, 1936, Hattam and Snow arrived in Bao'an, the temporary capital of the base area, where they received a warm welcome from the soldiers and civilians. As the only professional doctor in the northern Shanxi base area, Hattam was kept very busy. But he still found the time to accompany Snow when he was conducting interviews. The first person they talked to was Mao Zedong. Their conversations with Mao always began after dark. There was no electric lighting and it was pitch black outside the cave where Mao lived. Inside, smoking by the light of a paraffin lamp, Mao told Snow and Hatton about the history of the Communist Party of China. Later, Hatton and Snow began visiting other bases on the front line. There, they talked to hundreds of Red Army members, from generals to ordinary soldiers. Most of them were battle-hardened veterans from poor families, determined to change China and improve the life of its ordinary citizens. Their revolutionary spirit and optimism left a lasting impression on Hattam. In September 1936, Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist army launched an attack on the revolutionary base area with the aim of preventing the three main forces of the Red Army reuniting. Snow decided to leave for Beijing to complete work on his book, which would be published under the title Red Star Over China. Hattam stayed on. At the age of 26, he became a member of the Red Army, appointed its medical advisor by Mao Zedong in person. In early October 1936, the Red Army's first front army set out southward to join up with the second and fourth front armies. Hattam went with them. They passed through many areas inhabited by the Hui, a Muslim ethnic group. When word got around that Hattam's family came originally from Lebanon, the Hui took to him, regarding him as one of their own. The name Ma Haide soon became very familiar in the base area. As a sign of his acceptance, people began calling him Old Ma or Dr. Ma. On October the 22nd, 1936, 
the 1st, 2nd and 4th Front Armies reunited in southern Gansu province. The successful maneuver, completed despite enormous difficulties, demonstrated the Red Army's resolve to carry the revolution through to the end. Hattam, having witnessed the communist spirit of self-sacrifice and fortitude in the face of great hardship and danger, felt even greater empathy with their cause. From 1937 to 1947, George Hattam spent 10 years with the communist forces in Yan'an. Here, he flourished as both doctor and diplomat. Meanwhile, he got married and began life as a family man. In January 1937, Hattam and the Red Army arrived in Yan'an. For the next 10 years, Yan'an would serve as the headquarters of the Communist Party of China. History would record it as the birthplace of China's revolution. After six months in the revolutionary base area, Hattam took a life-changing decision. He would devote himself to the Chinese revolution. He applied to join the Communist Party of China. With his acceptance, he became the party's first Western member. Yodongi 把他脑袋给切掉了杀了这就是共产党他说国民党会杀你头你要是共产党的话国民党特务会杀你头国民党军队杀你头土匪杀你头地主杀你头只要你是共产党那你就就有这些对你是一个威胁你还愿意入党
He was designated to receive a number of foreign journalists, including Edgar Snow's wife, Helen, as well as Agnes Smedley and Israel Epstein. In 1944, President Roosevelt sent a US Army observer group to Yen An to assess the Communist Party's political and military strengths. To receive the group, the CPC leadership formed a special foreign affairs team, which was the precursor to the foreign ministry of the People's Republic. Hattam was appointed an advisor to this special group. In conversations with the visitors, he talked about the communist struggle, seeking to change the American support for the Kuomintang. Zhuwu那么高啊，什么什么的，呃，他后来嗯加入了共产党，嗯，他走过了长征的半截，嗯，他说这些个锻炼，这些个事情都是对他呃帮助很大，在在革命的队伍里头慢慢成熟了，成了
The new government appointed Hattam as an advisor to the Ministry of Public Health. It was an honorary position that held out the promise of a relatively comfortable life. But Hattam was reluctant to accept it. He preferred to carry on treating illness and disease among ordinary people, a calling he saw as his personal long march. Uh,德博士学会也是在皮肤皮肤病这一个科目。我觉得他去搞他自己最想搞的这个这个科目,像这一方面发展是非常好的。in 1954, the Central Institute of Dermatology and Venereology was founded in Beijing. As an advisor to the institute, Hattam oversaw the treatment and prevention of venereal disease across the whole of China. He would spend six months of every year leading medical teams to remote areas of Xinjiang, Inner Mongolia, Gansu and Qinghai. They would travel by donkey and sleep in tents and Mongolian yurts. Village by village, Hatton taught the herdsmen how to treat and prevent the disease. He provided basic medical training, and he examined, treated, and re-examined patients. By 1964, China had basically eliminated venereal disease. It was an achievement that astonished the world, and it would have been impossible without George Hatton's persevering work. Leprosy was another scourge in China at the time. This dreadful skin infection, if untreated, can progress and cause permanent damage to the nerves, limbs and eyes. Worse still, sufferers are subjected to discrimination and alienation. After venereal disease, Hattam turned his attention to eliminating leprosy. Once again, he traveled the length and breadth of China conducting research. At one time, the Dermatology Hospital of Zhejiang Province was a leprosy hospital. George Hattam was a regular visitor there, and he's still fondly remembered by the former director, Chen Deyou. He would often stay at the leprosy hospital for up to two months at a time. He'd share his meals and accommodation with the local staff. He never shunned direct physical contact with the patients, and he set an example by shaking hands with them. The patients, more used to being discriminated against, were very moved by this. In his later years, Hattam himself became ill. He suffered from cancer and underwent eight operations in eight years to try and cure it. Despite his weakened physical condition, his willpower remained strong and he carried on working to eradicate leprosy. In the early 1980s, new drugs were developed abroad for treating leprosy. But the price was high and China was unable to produce the drugs for itself. George Hattam, now in his 70s, and despite his poor physical condition, embarked on a grueling overseas tour to try and secure donations of medicines and equipment for treating leprosy in China. <laughs> Ta 
，对于我们国家这毛病防治要采取什么战略，采取什么措施，他都有着常人难以企及的目光。呃，无论呃，在无论就是说，在有关的技术的引进方面，还有人才、队伍的建设方面，它都发挥了很重要的作用。所以说，玛瑙就是说，前面是开是是开创性的这个贡献，就是由于它在前面示范，在前面引领，所以我们麻风病防治界很多的医务人员都跟着它，就是一起就是把我们这个麻风病防治事业开创了一个前所未有的高度。很多人跟我讲。他说：“如果你父亲是卫生部长或者是什么什么官的话，他说不如他做一个麻风病的医生。大家最敬佩的是这个，中国把麻风病消灭了，你父亲做了很多的努力。”他说：“这个比卫生部长比什么更伟大。”By the end of the 1980s. The number of leprosy sufferers in China had plunged from 500,000 to just 8,000. This was considered a milestone in China's development, and to commemorate Hattam's contribution to it, the Ministry of Public Health awarded him a title, Vanguard in New China's Medical Cause. He 呃，所想做的事情，做了，做完了，嗯，他也能安安心心的走了。他的一生是既普通又伟大。普通的哪呢？因为他是做的普普通通的、很平凡的工作，但是伟大在哪呢？他能坚持。他自己也说，他无怨无悔。In October 1988, at the age of 78, George Hattam passed away in Beijing. He'd completed his personal 50-year-long march. He devoted his life to China and to improving the health of its people. Now, George Hattam is resting in peace in the country. He came to call home.